All right, what's up guys? So um, I'm just gonna go through all the tips that I could think of to create large scale cityscapes really easily without destroying your computer. So here's some examples of some pieces that I've done that I've used all these techniques. Um, so I'll just go through these and uh, yeah, let's just get into this. So basically I'll just give you a few tips. Um, the last one I'll give you is a really, like if you're super lazy, this one is definitely for you. It's a uh, like a very easy way to basically instantly create this in like two seconds. Um, it requires a little bit of work beforehand, but you'll see what I mean. It's basically um, just a cheat code. So stick around for that one at the end. But the first tip is keep everything low poly. So I have this open here. You can see if I zoom way in, you can kind of tell that all of these buildings are pretty much just cubes. The texture is carrying all of that detail and the actual model by itself is just a low poly cube, if not slightly more high poly than just a cube. And when you have good textures and then lighting on top of that, volumetrics on top of that, uh, that that just, it brings it all together and it doesn't look like just a bunch of cubes. Okay, um, this tip is use this add-on called OSM. I use this a lot, so I think I used it in all of these. Okay, so this is Blender OSM. It's free, or you can just pay a little bit if you want, or you just put zero and you can get it for free. I use this all the time, and basically what it does is it lets you select an area in the real world, like on a map, and then it imports that geometry into Blender, and you just get uh, a 3D model of whatever city you want, basically. So I'll show you how to use this. Uh, OSM, and then I hit select at the top here. It brings out a map, and I can just go wherever I want. Let's just go... Um, okay, let's do Seattle. Okay, so what you want to do is just hit uh, this button here, show selection rectangle. And then if you select an area that's too big, it won't import properly. I actually just tried it twice before this and it didn't work. And I think it's because it was just too much stuff that I selected. So I'll try something a bit smaller. We can always just take this geometry and duplicate it around as many times as we want. Uh, but it's just importing it that's a bit uh, slow sometimes. So let's try this. That should be fine, I think. Think. Maybe let's go a bit smaller just to make sure this works. Let's try that. So I'll copy the coordinates here. Just press copy, go back to Blender and press paste. Paste in those coordinates and then I'll just uncheck everything except buildings. That's all I, all I care about. And then let's hit uh, import and just see if that works. Okay, so it took about 30 seconds and then it imported this. So let me just show you how to work with this because it's, it's really big when you import it and it's kind of annoying. So what I do is I just press N to bring up this menu, the side menu, go to view, and then change the end point, basically the render distance up to like 10,000 uh, or whatever works. So that's good. And then I also like to change the start distance from 0 0.01. Uh, sometimes if you have intersect, like meshes that are close together, it looks like they're intersecting and it gets weird if you have really large scale objects like this. So if you change this to one, uh, that will probably f just get rid of any weird issues that you run into with uh, if it looks like it's glitching out from a distance Just turn that to one and it'll, it'll fix that now This does not come with textures So we have to texture it ourselves the good news is it's super easy and the way you do this uh, Basically, I learned this from I think CG geek did a tutorial using OSM and what he did was he just went on textures.com got a bunch of or like not even a bunch like two or three building image textures from the uh, like photo section they have there and you just put that over everything and then put a different texture on the roof. So I'll show you exactly what to do. Um, just to make this easy, click use nodes to bring this in here. So let me just show you. I'll just go on to uh, textures.com. Let's search for building. Let's just search for building and let's just see what comes up. So I don't like using these textures like these PBR actual textures. What I like using is the regular images of the sides of buildings because these are real actual buildings. So I'll show you what this looks like. So um, I have a few downloaded already. I'll just use those. Okay, so I have a few of these downloaded already. So here's one I got from textures.com. Just simple stuff like this. Okay, so what you do here is um, download any texture you want, drag and drop it in. As long as you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can drag and drop files in like this. So then take this texture run it into the base color and then also run it into the roughness. I'll deal with that more in a second. But what we're doing is if I just 
Q project this. So U on the keyboard, uh, Q projection. And a faster way to do that is just U and then a C. You can see the C is highlighted, so C. So if I do this really fast, you can see, this is how I UV unwrap everything in two seconds. Tab A, U, C, done. Um, so that just Q projects everything. Okay, great. Scale up the UV map. So you can see what I did there. It was like this and you just select all of this stuff, A, scale it up and just do, like, just pick a scale that looks like it belongs here. Another thing you can do is if you scale this up on the Z axis, now if the buildings don't come in uh, looking tall enough, you can just scale it up on the Z. Let's re Q project that so that, uh, well actually let's apply the scale first, then Q project. Now scale it up. And now we have a bit, uh, a bit more taller buildings. And the other thing I'm gonna do here is use a color ramp, run that uh, between the roughness or like where the rough, where this goes into the roughness, you put a color ramp and I'll just crank this up so that the buildings or so that the windows are really reflective, but everything else is really not reflective. Let's look at that. So yeah, it's a bit hard to tell, but having the windows run into the roughness like that, it's subtle, but it uh, does definitely show up when you put it on every single building. There's gonna be some buildings here and there that do have little reflections and stuff that just look really nice. If you look here, for example, some buildings have some textures and some have other textures. I think this texture is the one I just used actually. Um, but you can see some of these have, there's, there's some variation in the texture. So what you can do is download a few different uh, textures from textures.com, download a few different images of buildings, and then go to edit mode. If you press L on the keyboard, it'll select all of the linked geometry that's underneath your mouse. So anything that's linked, underneath where your cursor is, it'll select anything that's joined together basically. So the easiest way to do this is either select random or just kind of move your mouse around and spam L while you're doing it. Repeat that process of assigning this building texture to it, but use a different image from textures.com this time. So if I go new, assign to that selection, create a new texture, grab a different map. So grab, say this one, drop it in, run it into the base color, it's already unwrapped, so we don't even need to worry about that. Run it into the roughness, color ramp. I think I need to scale it up because it looks a bit small, so let's hit S2, scale it up by two. And you can see now we're getting a bit more variation in these buildings. It's not all the exact same texture. So I'd probably do that two or three more times just to switch it up a little bit more. And then just put whatever materials you want on the roofs. Usually what I do here is I just put some random metal texture on the roof, just some grunge map or whatever. So let's try if I just select um, all the, yeah, if I just select the roof material and everything like this, go to a new thing, assign it, new texture, and let's just grab some random roughness map. So textures.com, um, even like some random concrete thing like this will work fine. Let's just put that into the base color and scale that up, maybe scale it down even. Yeah, that's like, it's fine. There's some buildings here which didn't get selected and I think it's because when I put the new texture on it, I actually got rid of that roof material. So make sure you don't uh, override that material when you're assigning things. You get the point though, you can do anything to this. So you can take this, say you want it darker, add a curves, make it darker. Um, if you wanna select any material, you just go into face selection, click on that material. It'll bring you there in the shader editor. Again, let's try curves, make it a bit darker, not that dark, something like that, and cool. Okay, the next one is, I kind of mentioned this already, but using lighting and volumetrics to get the look to just look nicer. So you can see, like paying attention to where the light is coming from and how it creates shadows, that's super important. And throwing on volumetrics on top of that is also, just gives it a nice atmosphere, you can see. One other thing with these is you'll notice in all of these daytime ones, the light is coming from the side instead of like the front or the back. So it's half of it is it really bright, intense sunlight, and then the other half is really dark, uh, interesting shadows. And that's my favorite way to light these kinds of scenes. It just brings out all the detail in these buildings here. Sometimes it's cool to have the light behind, like you get a sunset or something. That's nice too. Um, sometimes it's a bit harder to work with that because then all the shadows are like, you're just kind of dealing with silhouettes. So this is my favorite lighting setup with this, but um, 
I think the one that I pretty much never do is having the sun coming from right behind the camera. That basically gives you no shadows because everything is in sunlight and it just looks, uh, anytime I do something like that, it just looks bad. So I never end up running with it. But so this is my favorite way to light is have the light coming from the side, if not the front, like a sunset, like with the sun in the picture. The next step is I mentioned having like keep everything low poly, but I think it works really well to bring in high, high poly buildings, like from Kitbash or something you modeled that's a lot higher detail and then just place those buildings in manually by yourself once in a while. So you have all of these uh, like low poly buildings that kind of fill out everything and make up the majority of the scene. But then you manually take a few buildings that you made or that Kitbash made or whoever that look really nice. And you put those in the foreground, you put them in places that are high visual interest places, like the important places you put higher quality buildings in those places. You can also just do this to cover up little flaws that you might get if you're using particles. Sometimes there's the majority of the landscape looks good, but then you have some areas that are just kind of weird. So you can manually place high quality buildings in place of where things get a little bit bad. Okay, so that's how you use OSM. Now, for the bonus tip, say you're super lazy and you don't want to do you don't want to deal with this ever again. You just want to set it up once and then you want to be able to just drag and drop this into any project file and just have it load instantly. So what you can do is take this, apply the scale, apply the rotation, uh, right click this, mark as asset, and then in your asset library, um, that'll show up. And now you can just drag and drop it into any project you want. And it's it'll come with all the textures, all set up, proper scale, everything. And you can just have an instant city. So what you can do now is just drag and drop that in. Um, Alt D to create a linked duplicate of it and just spam this around as much as you want. Rotate 90, you can scale it up, scale it down, uh, just rotate it around and then you get, you basically have an uh, infinitely big city now. You can just duplicate this so many times. It's low poly, but it looks high quality. So you can see if I want a ginormous city, I can just keep duplicating this as many times as I want and just get unlimited buildings. And it runs, you know, super fast still. There's not that many polygons here. Go and use all these tips that I just showed you. Um, go make some cool stuff and yeah, post it online and then tag me if you use these tips. Show me what you make and uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace.